all the MIDI effects that we talked about, well, almost all, uh, almost all, uh, to create a generative music project that you can use for a whole bunch of different uh, applications. So you can make it uh, super spacey and Brian Eno-y, or you can make it a little bit more tame if you'd like. But the basic components are the same. So the first thing we have to do is we have to uh, make a random rhythm generator. So this is a little bit different than the method that I explained on the blog um, a few months ago. So let's just go ahead and make what's a seed clip. So I'm just going to go ahead and enter, um, press, uh, or double click rather on this clip slot and just make one MIDI clip that just has uh, one note that lasts an entire bar. That's it. And it doesn't even really matter where the note is. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to put an arpeggiator after this. What the arpeggiator is going to do is it's going to take that note, it's going to divide it up into little pieces, and that those pieces are going to be defined by the rate. And all this other stuff, the style, uh, the offset, all that stuff doesn't really matter because there's only one note going in. So let's go ahead and press play on the seed clip, and you'll see that this MIDI meter is going up and down at the rate of one eighth note, like so. So now we have that, and what we'd like to do now is take this pretty uh, regular subdivision of one eighth note, and I'd like to make that into um, uh, more random rhythms. And the way that I'm going to do that is by essentially cutting out uh, some of those notes. So I'm going to do it actually in a two-step uh, fashion. So I'm going to put a velocity effect here after the arpeggiator. And I want this velocity effect to make the uh, different notes of this arpeggiator uh, vary sort of wildly in, uh, in velocity or in volume. So I'm going to go ahead and go to the velocity effect and turn up the random all the way. And I'm going to go ahead and put a MIDI instrument on here so that you can hear how this works. So I'm going to go to piano and keys, just the acoustic piano. And now listen to what happened. So I'm getting eighth notes, but they're all of different velocity, right? And if I turn the rate up, the notes speed up, right? So now what I want to do is I want to take a, make a gate effect and cut off um, sort of arbitrarily the notes beneath a certain volume. So I'm going to go ahead and take velocity and put another velocity uh, right before the acoustic piano effect. And this time I'm going to put it in gate mode. And what this means is it's going to, uh, depending on where the, I put this lowest parameter, it's going to cut everything off beneath that. So now you, you'll uh, listen to what happens as I raise the lowest uh, setting of the gate. So right now all of them are getting through. So now you can see that this little uh, orange LED blinks every time a note is being cut off. Like so, so that works pretty well, right? And so that's going to basically, and, it, and if I lower the gate, more of the notes go through. Raise the gate, less notes get through. So you can see that the, the gate setting is actually a way to affect the rhythm. So right now I have the subdivision being affected by the rate and the actual rhythm itself being uh, affected by the gate uh, Parameter. So the last thing I want to do is I want to be able to vary the length of the note. So I'm going to take the note length effect and just drag it right here. Now you can see if I turn the length of the note up, now I'm getting a little bit more variation in terms of the note length. So this together is going to be my random uh, rhythm generator. So I'm going to go ahead and select all of them and press Command G and this is going to create a MIDI effect rack out of them. And then I'm going to uh, go into macro mode, and I'm going to map these parameters that I went over, the, the sync rate, the, where'd it go? the uh, gate range, and the note length. I'm going to map those all uh, to the effects macro uh, knobs, and that way it's going to allow me to access those parameters really quickly without having to fuzzle a whole bunch of stuff. So remember that the, the lowest parameter of the range is actually going to make uh, the rhythms different, and the time length is going to clearly make it sound either more 
legato or less. So, so I'm gonna go ahead and save this, call this one rhythm generator, something like that, okay. There we go. So now I have a rather annoying series of notes. <laughs> so what I have to do right now is I have to make them into different uh, different notes and different keys. So what I can do now is, I'm gonna go ahead and close these chains and all that good stuff. I'm just gonna duplicate this a few times. And then I'm going to set each, um, the parameters of each uh, a little bit different. So I'm gonna turn this guy's chord off Make the chord off for this one, make the range a little bit bigger. I'm going to make the choices also. Actually, let's transpose it down, maybe. And make the rate a little bit slower, the time length lower. That way, the, uh, the it's a little bit more staccato. And make this one, the time, the sync rate really low, or really high, sorry. Slow is probably the better way to put it. Make the range low, the choice is low, the chord on, and the transpose the same. Okay, so let's hear what we have now. So you can see that by doing this, I can really affect the uh, the randomness of everything, the range of everything, and then I can mess with the pan and all that good stuff. And clearly, you don't have to have the same effects or the uh, same instrument for all these. You can really mess with it quite a bit. You can mess with the BPM and all that good stuff. If you make the, of course, if you make the uh, the subdivision of everything a lot. Uh, slower then everything is going to have a little bit more of an ambient sort of spaciness to it be a little bit more Ryuichi Sakamoto So there you go.